Yeah, so my dang neighbor's dog bit me this weekend. I... But before you panic, okay, calm down. It's all right. It didn't bite my skin. Luckily, I was wearing my new sweatshirt that I only had, or sweat jacket, that I only had for a week. And the sleeves were over my hands. So that little bastard, part of my language. There you go. Now I have a place for my thumb. So let me tell you about this dog. His name is Mambo. He lives next door. They rent the house next door. They're very nice, don't get me wrong. But when they got him as a puppy, okay, and he's still pretty young, I would say he's probably getting to be about two years old if he's not already. I had a Roddy, as you know, who passed away uh, this past year. And um, she loved Mambo. They would run up and down this, the fence, but I'm half wondering if she really did love Mambo or if she knew there was something wrong with the dog. <laughs> So she was guarding. But um, this dog, when they got him, and I, you know, I'm not saying that I'm like a professional dog trainer or anything, but I have a lot of experience in training dogs because I'm a Rottweiler lover and I've had a, um, two full bred Rottweilers, um, one full German and the other German and American. And then I had my dog Mithos, who is half Rottweiler and half Lat. And, um, all three of them very protective over me. <laughs> I was their mama. Probably because I am the alpha in the house. My husband, don't get me wrong, you do not want to mess with him. He is a Scorpio and you just, he keeps quiet, keeps quiet, keeps quiet. But if you keep pushing him, pushing him, pushing him, then there's an explosion and you better run away because you don't want to be around him when he's mad. <laughs> Luckily, it takes a lot for him to be mad at me. <laughs> I'm too cute. What can you say? I mean, come on. I'm just teasing. Um, I have, he's a great man. But, um, yeah. So, I kind of run the house when it comes to the dogs. Mama speaks. Everybody runs. <laughs> so, anyway, they noticed how well-behaved my dogs were. Especially Gracie, who is a big dog. And how great she listens to me. Because she knows Mama's the alpha. And... I am not going to try her. Now, it took me a good four years to really break her, not in the sense of breaking, but her will, you know, her realizing that she submits to me, you know, I'm her boss. Everybody in the family is her boss. So when they asked me how, you know, I, I got them to be the way they are, you know, granted, handling Boston's is a little different than handling Rottweilers. Not too much different, but a little different. But I'm going to use uh, Gracie as an example because she is a uh, breed that unfortunately has a horrible name to them. And it's because of the owners, not the dog. I'm sorry. There may be some dogs out there that got some screws loose, but... You know, maybe breeding issues and things like that, but majority of the time when you hear a pit bull attacked or Rottweilers attack somebody and mauled them and blah, 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 I'm going to tell you right now, it's the owner's fault. Just saying. I'm just going to lay it right out for you. It's not the dog. The dog's just behaving the way that they feel they are supposed to behave because you didn't teach them how they should be behaving. So anyway, to get to my point... Mambo, as a puppy, was already very aggressive and was very dominant. Which, honestly, when I pick out a pup, I'd rather have a dominant puppy than a submissive one because submissive ones, you got to worry about fear biting and things like that. Dominant pup, all I need to do is just make sure that um, I submit them. And I'll tell you in a bit how that's done. I'm telling you this story. So I told them exactly how it's done. And I'm like, and you're really going to need to be on this dog because I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have issues with him biting if you don't get a handle of it right now. And I thought they listened to me, but nah, they didn't listen to me. So anyway, I told them what they needed to do because a very good friend of mine who raised Rottweilers and pit bulls, when I had Mythos, who was only half Roddy, um, I was having issues with him knocking me down and then taking off. And he said, he's dominating you. What you need to do is dominate him. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, right. 
you know how dogs will hump other dogs? And I'm like, you're not telling me to hump my dog, are you? <laughs> and he said, no. What I'm saying is it's not always a sexual thing. He said that it is their way of dominating another dog and saying who's boss. And there's other behaviors that dogs do, like if they hover their head over you, uh, they put their paw on you. Um, and it really depends on the nature of it. Um, if you ever had a dog follow you in the bathroom and they put their back to you, they're actually submitting to you. And they're also protecting you because in the animal world, when they go to the bathroom, um, they're at a very uh, disadvantage and in a very vulnerable um, place. You know what I mean? Like, hello, they're taking a poo. And uh, if another dog or animal comes up to them and um, while they're in that vulnerable position, you know, it could be bad. So their thoughts naturally instinctual will throw their back in front of you and guard you while you're doing your business. <laughs> I know, right? But it's important to understand how dogs think. And he taught me that. So he said, no, no, it's not a sexual thing necessarily. He says, well, it's just a dominating. What you need to do is to roll that dog on his back each and every day, a few times a day if necessary, or if you can. Everybody in your house needs to do it. That way he knows or she knows their place in your household. So I did that and let me tell you something. It worked wonderful. Mythos was such a great dog, such a great dog. Very protective over me, very loving. Um, boy, do I miss him. And he was me and my husband's first fur baby together. So, you know, he's special. But um, so I told her and him next door, I said, look, this is what you got to do and everybody in your house needs to do it. I'm like, you know, I got this advice from somebody, you know, I'm like, if you need me to help you, I would be more than happy to help you because he's a puppy and he was less worrisome as far as um, getting bit and stuff like that. Yeah, puppy's teeth hurt, but it's not as bad as being bit by an adult. So anyway, I'm not afraid of the dog, just so you know. In fact, I... I can't stand the dog and it's terrible because it really should be mad at them. Um, but the dog's got freaking attitude and he'll stare me down and I'll look right at him like, I, uh, yeah, come and get me, buddy. But anyway, he did. <laughs> so they get to the story. They never did what I told them and I knew they didn't because of how he was acting. And when we had friends staying with us because they were in hard times and that's a story for another time. Um, uh, his, our friend's daughter, who's probably like 14 now, maybe 13, 13, I think. Um, anyway, her name's Bobby and she's so cute and so sweet. She, um, was outside. She was, thank God, wearing jean shorts and, um, like, you know, the ones that go above the knee that are tight fitting. And um, the dog came charging at her off his damn uh, uh, chain because they have him on a chain, which don't get me started with that. And because um, he's not a dog you should really have on a chain, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, he came charging at her and he bit her right in the ass. Pardon my language. Broke the skin. She was bleeding. Now, it wasn't anything terrible that she needed stitches or anything. I made sure it was cleaned. And then I had a talk with her over the fence, um, our neighbor, and said, hey, he bit my niece. I just call her my niece, you know, because I've known her since she was a baby. And um, and uh, she was like, oh my gosh, did she? She didn't even freaking know that her dog charged over to our property and bit her in the butt. Oh, so mad. So mad but I have to live next door to these people and I did not want to be you know nasty I didn't want my jersey to come out so I said did he have all his shots and she says yes he did yes he did I'm like okay well you're gonna have to do something about him because he's aggressive and he charged on our property and bit her 
Well, they didn't do anything. And then I see her daughter come, who doesn't live with her, with a pit bull off the leash. And I'm going, I sure hope the apple didn't far too f it fall too far from the tree. Because that, that's not a breed that you don't, you just let do whatever. You got to train. I mean, any dog, you really have to train. But if you get bit by a pit bull compared to bit by Mambo, it's going to be a hell of a different story. Oh, and by the way, did you know that Dalmatians out of all breeds have the worst bite? Right? I was so shocked, but they do. They really do. That's another story. My brother's crazy ass dog that he had, Chelsea, who loved me, by the way. Why? Because I've got the upper hand. I'm the alpha. I'm going to have to tell you about that shortly. But anyway, here I go. My little bunny trails. So one day I hear Jason shout, you know, it's this weekend, Sunday, I think. Don't matter. He's like, Dan, he calls me Dan. He's like, you got to go down um, and let the dogs out. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, Mambo's loose. So I'm like, oh, okay. So he figured if I let my, my guys out. Mambo will come running over the fence and do what they do, wearing out my ground in my yard. You should see how deep the... It's like a trench from running back and forth between Gracie and Ozzy. Ozzy learned it from Gracie, so now it's a game. And um, so he figured they'll stop Mambo so that they can, that our neighbors can get a hold of him. Well, this is a dog you don't want loose. He bites everybody. So anyway, and I only knew that because of what she said to my husband later after the incident. So I went on my front porch to see what was going on. Mind you, I'm not afraid of this dog. I don't give a crap if he's aggressive or not. I ain't gonna take his crap. I am not afraid of him. And if you show fear, they're gonna be all over you anyway. So I'm standing on my porch, on the side of my porch, which kind of wraps around to a partial L. It's like kind of a little bit of a wraparound porch. And um, uh, Mambo came running over, ran over by the fence. Great opportunity for them to grab him. Meanwhile, the, the male neighbor, they're not married, they live together. And his kids from another relationship, I don't know if it's marriage or what, or chasing after dog. He's like, oh, just let him run. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to beat the crap out of you, dude. What the hell? So I'm standing there watching the whole thing. And I said, I let my dogs out so that, you know, you guys can grab them when you get over there. It's my way of saying, get your freaking dog. <laughs> Do you know that Mamba comes right over and sits down right in front of me? Now, I have a railing right here because, you know, I'm short. And my, my arms are like this on the railing. And he stops and he looks at me. And I see the menace on his face. I know, I know, but you know what? It's instinctual. You, you, you know, when you get feelings about something, you just know. Really should have pulled my arms away because I saw it, but I was not standing down from this dog. Oh, hell no. Just wish I was quicker than I, you know, like I was when I was younger because I would have grabbed a hold of him. I would have. Not beat him. I just would grab him by the nape in the neck and hold him and let him know who's boss. And then they could get their damn dog. But it didn't happen. It happened too quick. And I just looked at them. Just like this. Stern. Just like when I would look at my dogs when they did something wrong. And they usually go, ooh, mom's not happy. I was told it was the pit bull look. <laughs> well, I said, hi, Mambo. Like that. This son of a bee jumped up. Grabbed my sweatshirt and went like that. Oh, I was pissed off. I was so pissed off. Now, I felt him hit my hand. And had he had a hold of my hand, I probably would have had to go into the hospital. And so would he because I would have been beating the crap out of the dog to get off my hand. That point, it's not abuse. Anyway, and then I went after them later. But well, my husband probably would have. He's very protective. So I'm like, oh my God, he bit me. They didn't even freaking like notice. Just oblivious. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to kill these people, right? 
And my husband's out in the yard. So I yell over to him. I'm like, Mama freaking bit me. Like that. And she goes, he did? Now she's paying attention because I'm like yelling at my husband about it. And he's like, are you okay? I'm like, luckily, he just got the sleeve of my new sweatshirt. I only had for a week. Yeah, I was being slightly passive aggressive. And she's like, I'll pay for it. And I, I was just sitting, I was like, don't worry about it. And I walked away. I was so mad, so mad, so mad. And like, I'm in, see, when I get angry, my ear, my eyes tear up. So like, <laughs> when I was younger, I'd say, yeah, I beat the crap out of you if you <laughs> got into a fight. But I'd be crying the whole time because I just feel so much. I was so mad. I had to really, really calm down. And I have not been... Uh, praying and meditating as much lately because I hadn't been feeling well, which is really the best time to do it. And had I been meditating, I probably wouldn't have gotten so like, <sighs> at least I don't think I would have been a little bit, a lot more peaceful, you know. However, I wasn't. Later, she came to the house with like $60. This jacket cost 40 It was at the Oddities Fair. I really liked the Oddities Fair. We went the first time last year, second time. And I'm like, oh, I want a, I want a sweat jacket. And my husband bought it for me. I really like it. And that son of a you-know-what put a hole in it. <sighs> anyway, it's over and done with. My husband said to her, it only cost 40 He took 40 from her. Because he's like, I'm getting my money for it. He's like, they need to learn. They're not going to learn if we're going to just let things go. He bit Bobby. Who knows who else he bit? Because she said to him, that's why I tell people, don't go to touch him. Well, I didn't go to touch him. He was on my damn property. And he grabbed my freaking sleeve. He grabbed it like one of those... Sh Shoe towns, whatever they call them, that do the training with the arm thing. That's exactly what he did. I'm still annoyed by it because they are just so irresponsible. What's going to happen is, is he's going to end up biting somebody and it's going to be serious. They're, he's going to like maul their face or something like that. And um, yeah, they're going to get in huge trouble and that dog's going to get put down. So yeah, that was my Sunday. I would have been on here sooner, guys, but like I said, I had, you know, I had gotten the flu. Luckily, it wasn't really bad. I um, I took some of the Tamiflu they gave, but really didn't take it all. It went away on its own because, you know, my immune system's strong enough to get, handle it. I mean, goodness me, I got autoimmune disorder, so obviously my immune system's so good, it attacks itself. <laughs> but um, my, my son had it worse than me. And my husband, we, me and my husband got through it quick. And, um, <coughs> um, this is allergies. And then I, um, we had really wacky weather, which, you know, now it's beautiful blue skies before they start marking it up with their darn chem writing. Um, uh, but a little chilly today. So it's been like, okay, we get tornadoes and then next thing you know, we get snow and then, you and all of you who understand chronic illness and pain knows how that plays havoc. Um, anywhere from a person having back problems to autoimmune issues, fibromyalgia, whatever it is. So um, I've had pretty rough couple weeks um, and not including the flu. So I've been run down, haven't gotten really any work done. Um, and, uh, but you know, you gotta listen to your body. I'm learning the hard way that if I don't listen to my body, then I'm out even f longer than I would have been if I listened to my body. So that's some advice for you guys that are dealing with the same stuff. Listen to your body. Just listen to it. I am very fortunate to have a supportive husband because he'll tell me, look, if you need to be in bed all day, you need to be in bed all day. I feel terrible because he's working his butt off with a a spine that no normal person would be able to stand or sit or walk or nothing. That's how bad it is. And yet he goes to work every day. The man is strong as heck. But anyway, I wanted to tell you about my brother's Dalmatian. I'm just going to tell you one story. The first time I ever met Chelsea, who, by the way, I loved, but she was not to be trusted. Um, I could because she knew I was boss. 
she was in the front seat of my brother's car and I'm getting into the car and she's there and she's growling at me. I'm like, oh, hell no. I'm not sitting in the back seat for a dog. You get your butt back there right now. And she looked at me and she was like, okay. She went back. She all snare like her teeth all like, ah. <laughs> I don't think so, girlfriend. You're going in the back. <laughs> so that was our first introduction. And after that, Chelsea loved me. <laughs> but um, she was good with my son when my son would be watched by my brother's first wife, Denise. And, um, and fine, but her son got bit on the nose and I kept telling her you better stop your children being all in her face because that dog is not very tolerant and you did not train that dog to be around children see with my dogs knowing that I had nieces and nephew um I would not really yank on their ears but I would tug a little bit here and there on their ears tug a little bit on the tail things that little kids would do so they get used to it and then it wouldn't be so upsetting god forbid I don't see it and it happens I don't want my dogs end up biting another dog plus they were very socialized I had them around little ones I had them around from since they were a puppy it's so important to socialize your dog and um that's why Ozzy's so weird because my little guy who's attached to me, my little shadow, he, um, he's weird. Somebody go down the pen and he's like, bah! and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I tell them, like, I'm like, hey, just so you know, he's a bit neurotic. So he's going to probably bark his head off at you for the first minute. And then once, you know, he's around you for a while, then he's going to be leaning on you to pet. He's just weird. But I'm responsible with him. I don't, you know, and he listens to me. So if he's off his leash and I take, like, I'll take them for a ride. They love it. Even if I say car ride, because they're in the other room. <laughs> they get all crazy. Ah, yay, yay. And then in the whole time he's in the car, he's like, he's, he's a crazy dog. <laughs> but he's such a sweetheart. He really is. He's all bark. He really is all bark. But I know him. I know how he is. I know, you know, I'm confident in that. But I don't take any chances either. So that's why I tell people, eh, I'll give him a minute. Don't pet him. Just let him settle down. You know, because God forbid he were to bite somebody. I really don't think he would. But God forbid he would. You know? Um, I think it's just because he, he left his litter at five weeks. So he didn't get all the socializing with his litter. And, and that's so important. So, and he's been attached to me through me first getting diagnosed with all I'm dealing with. And, um, and I have a lot of anxiety. So I think the dog picked up all my, my issues. I've never had a dog like him ever, but, um, but he's a sweetheart. Anyway, I think I lost my track of thought on that. Uh, but, um, so guys, that's it. I just wanted to rant today. <laughs> I wanted to rant Monday, but I just was not feeling it. Um, but all right, guys. Well, until next time, this is Danielle, who wants to go back to Celestial Piper, but I'm not sure if they'll let me change it back. It was a pretty rash decision. So as of right now, it's Celestial Divine Design saying goodbye. Peace out, my brothers and sisters. me a hug. Yay! Bye now!